it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going diving with my friends Keale and Logan. And to be honest, I don't really know what we're gonna shoot, but I'm gonna bring my three prong and my gun. So I have both options. Either I'm gonna shoot a bunch of like pan fry fish, like mipachis, aveoveos, coles, whatever. Or I'm gonna shoot something on the bigger side, maybe ukus, moose, which would be pretty cool because I haven't shot either of those fish in a while. I haven't shot anything um, real uh, good size in a while, like these guys back here. Um, so hopefully we can find some cool stuff, maybe some ukus, like I said, moose, yellow spots. Any of those would be nice because I haven't had I haven't had the chance to eat those or shoot at those in a very long time. Um, so hopefully that's the case. But if not, I'm gonna go out and just shoot a bunch of fry fish and then bring them back to the apartment, have a little catch and cook, and basically we're just gonna go out and try and catch dinner. So yeah, that's the plan for today. See you guys in the water. Shoot. Alright guys, so first drop here, actually technically not the first drop because I did take a bunch of drops before this with my gun. Wasn't seeing too much fish, so decided to grab the ski prong, go after some three prong fish. And I'm looking in this hole and immediately I see this big white tip just sleeping on the bottom. But usually white tips are pretty chill, so I just kept on going about my business, trying to find some Mempachis of Veils. And immediately I look into this hole and I see like three Aveo Veils. And there's a the big white tip right there, just cruising. So I try and get a little closer to him and I could tell it was a male because he does have the claspers on his two back fins. Waved hello, then turned to my right and shot one of the Aveo Veils that I saw. Kind of woke him up a little bit. Do apologize for that. Didn't mean to disturb your nap. But got the first fish of the day right here. Really nice size of Aveo And so I didn't realize it at this point right here, but later on this hole I re realized was absolutely loaded with Aveo Veils. I gotta say that looking in this hole on the multiple drops that I did, there had to have been at least 
10 to 15 of them just in this one cave and i've never seen that many of veil veils in one place let alone one hole ever in my life i don't think so it's super strange it was like a Menpachi school amount of veil veils and you'll see um some more of them as i keep dropping dropping on this cave but yeah that was the first one right there got one down so once again going back down on this hole Looking left to right, see the shark again. Once again, white tips are usually super chill, so I wasn't really worried about him. See another avail veil. There's another one on my right. You can see him right there. I line up on this one that's right in front of me. Shoot him. And as I'm pulling it out, unfortunately, it comes off right here. But the great thing about three prongs, you can just reload, take another shot. So that was two right there on my right. As you can see, there's a bunch more in there. I tried to get another shot on the one that ripped off. Couldn't get it. So then I line up on another one. So that's four. Couldn't get a shot on him. So I line up on another one. That's five. Got him. And then there was a six one over to my left. And that was just in that one section. So a, like I said, a ridiculous amount of avail veils inside of this cave. It was really, really strange. I just barely got this guy by the end of his tail right there. Yeah, never seen so many avail veils in one spot, ever. Like, I've never seen one hole have more than maybe two or three, maybe four at the most. But there is easily double digit avail veils inside this cave. There's avail veil number two. So once again, going down on the same cave. So I've got two avail veils at this point. Looking for a little bit more because it's going to be me, Kale, and Logan eating dinner. So we're going to need a few more than just two avail veils. So I go down to the first section of the cave that I looked in. And you can see there's two avail veils right there. And I actually right there saw the one that I shot again. So the one that ripped off, I saw him again. But look how many avail veils are in this one clip. Like if you rewind it, try and count how many avail veils you see in this one clip, just in this one section of the cave alone. But there's another one, avail veil number three. And so it was really nice because usually when I don't see that many avail veils, Sometimes I'll go down on a really nice looking hole and I look inside and there's only small ones in there. So then, or there's only one or two small ones, so I don't really want to shoot those. But in this cave, I would look in and see like five of them. I could pick the biggest one or the medium sized one that was closest to me and just be a lot more uh, selective with the avail veils I was shooting while at the same time getting the numbers that I wanted. So this was a really rare opportunity for me. Like I said, I don't ever see this many avail veils in one place. It was like looking at a Menpachi school, but it was all avail veils. And this shark, you can see him in almost all of these clips. He's just cruising through this hole. Like I said, they're so chill that they, they don't bother me. I don't bother them. Although I did wake him up from his nap, which I'm sure he wasn't super happy with. But right here, I see the one that I shot at again. So I try and get a shot on him. I line up. Couldn't get the shot off. The shark right on my left, just cruising. So I line up on a different one, shoot him. So I keep seeing the one that I shot that got away over and over and over again. So he's still in this hole. So every time I'm dropping, um, before I shoot the one closest to me or the biggest one that I see, I'm trying to see if I can get a shot on the one that got away because I don't want him to, I already shot him, I already wounded him. I would rather just take a second shot and, and finish the job than have him you know, live the rest of, that, rest of his life with whatever problems those three holes in him cause. Because he is a small fish, it's not like he's a big boy. 
Um, so I, I would imagine that those three holes in it would cause a lot more problems than it's safe. I shot like a papillo in a non-vital area and it got away. I would imagine that a bigger fish would have less problems. But this guy, these guys, obviously not very big fish. So I decided I was gonna take one last drop on this hole, get one more avail avail, or try and get the one that I already shot that came off. So I'm making my way down here. Keeping an eye out, trying to see if I can spot the one that I've already hit. And I spot him here, but he kind of takes off into the back of the cave and he was out of range. And as you can see, there's two other ones that were right in front of me there. The white tip went back to sleep on the other end. And there's one sitting right in front of me here, but the one I shot comes in. So I take a shot at him and manage to secure the fish that I lost. So I wasn't leaving him wounded in the ocean. Yeah, there was that one sitting right in front of me that I could have shot, but this one ended up actually being a lot bigger. And this was actually the biggest avail avail of the day by a very good amount. But as you can see right there, there's where my other shot was, the one where he came off and then stuck him right in the gill plate on the other side. And he wasn't getting off that time. But after I shot that guy, after I retrieved my lost fish, I decided to just leave the hole alone and stop shooting at, at, um, at the avail avails in there. Uh, just because I already had five, this is my fifth one. And like I said, there was a lot more. There was like at least 10, probably more than 10 in there. But I didn't want to just go in there and shoot all of them. There's obviously a good population going in there. And I want to keep that going for future dives and, and um, future divers. So I decided to leave that hole alone for the, for the day and then grab my gun because Keale had said he saw a couple Uku swimming around the area. So put my three prong on the float, grab the gun. I'm looking around here. Not really seeing any ukus or anything. But I had also seen uh, a nice Moanakali and a nice uh, Munu swimming around between those two rocks over there. So decided to take a blind drop. Can't, couldn't really see them yet. And then I look back and I'm looking around me too to see if the ukus are coming in from behind me or something. And then I see the pair of goats. There's a the big Munu right there. He kind of almost comes into range and then turns right back around. And then right here, he comes in with the Kali. So I line, in with, line up on the Kali. Take a shot as he's leaving. And got a really weird shot. You'll see when I pull him out. Got a really weird low shot. Um, but because he was kind of at an angle, and I guess he turned when he felt me pull the trigger, when he felt the vibrations of me pulling the trigger. So when as he turned, I cut out this big gash in his side. You can see it right there. But got lucky and the, the, the barb hung onto a piece of his skin and luckily he didn't rip off. And as soon as I saw that, you can see the giant cut on his side for a moment there. But as soon as I saw how low my shot was, I didn't want to chance him um, getting into a hole and ripping off or getting into a hole and getting eaten by a pui. So I just swam over to the hole, grabbed him, pulled him out, got my hands in his gills and sealed the deal. Yeah, you can see this big cut in his side right there. And the barb was just hanging on by a piece of his skin. But nice size Moanakali, not too bad. Maybe like two-ish pounds, one and a half, two pounds. And this was my last fish of the day. Nice Moana Kali.
gotta get the sizzle. 